Hi, I'm Rajiel Amin. I'm storekeeper for Riverside County Fire, and this is Report on Conditions. This week, our firefighters responded to a traffic collision involving multiple tractor trailers on Interstate 10 just east of Cabazon. And Station 17 in Mariloma gets a special visitor. Hi, I'm Tawny Castro, and thank you for joining CAL FIRE, Riverside County Fire Department's Report on Conditions. Last week, from March 20th through March 26th, our firefighters responded to 3,587 calls for service, including 2,728 medical emergencies and 79 fire-related calls. Of the fire calls, nine were vegetation fires and 12 were structure fires. Let's check out a few highlighted incidents from the past week. On Tuesday, March 21st, firefighters were dispatched to a traffic collision at the intersection of Riverside Drive and Joy Street in the city of Lake Elsinore. The first arriving engine company officer confirmed two vehicles involved with moderate damage, but fortunately no extrication was required. Upon further investigation, it was discovered that two patients would need to be transported to a local area hospital via ground ambulance. Just after midnight on Thursday, March 23rd, Firefighters responded to a residential structure fire at the 43,000 block of Navajo Street in the city of Indio. The first arriving engine company officer reported a single-story residential home with heavy smoke and fire emitting from the structure. Fortunately, firefighters quickly contained the flames before they could spread to the nearby threatened homes. Indio's Building and Safety Division were notified to red tag the home. No civilian or firefighter injuries were reported. At around 7 a.m. on Thursday, March 23rd, firefighters received reports of a structure fire at the intersection of Ocotillo Road and 5th Street in Desert Hot Springs. The first arriving engine company officer confirmed established fires in two separate commercial structures. After a second alarm was requested by the incident commander, fire crews made an aggressive attack containing the fire to two units of one structure and four units of the second structure. Firefighters, as well as CAL FIRE law enforcement investigators remained on scene for mop-up and investigation. Just after 8 a.m. on Thursday, March 23rd, firefighters were called to a traffic collision involving multiple commercial vehicles on Interstate 10 just east of Cabazon. The first arriving chief officer reported three tractor trailers involved with one patient needing extensive extrication. Within 20 minutes, firefighters freed the patient from the wreckage where they were then transported to an area hospital with moderate injuries. During the incident, three lanes of Interstate 10 were shut down due to the debris and spilled oil from the collision. At about 9 a.m. on Thursday, March 23rd, firefighters were called to a traffic collision near the 1600 block of West Nicolette Street in Banning. The first arriving engine company officer reported two vehicles involved with a total of seven patients, turning the scene into a multi-patient incident. One of the seven was extricated from their vehicle within 10 minutes, and a total of four ambulances were requested to transport the injured patients to an area hospital. The Riverside County Fire Department is currently enrolling volunteer reserve firefighters and other vital volunteer roles. Whether you want to start an exciting career in the fire service or just want to serve your community, visit rvcfire.org to find out more. In honor of National Cleaning Week, we want to share some important spring cleaning fire safety tips to get your home and yard ready for the months ahead. Remove dead vegetation, trash, and other flammable materials from your property. Inspect your grill carefully and make sure that it's free of grease buildup and other debris. If you're using a propane grill, don't forget to inspect the tank hose and all hose connections. Inside your home, make sure that your dryer is free from lint buildup and the vent is not blocked by anything. And finally, check your electrical cords for any visible damage or fraying. Hello, I'm Captain Richard Cordo with CAL FIRE Incident Management Team 2. And we're currently here in Inyo and Mono counties supporting California's extreme weather that we have been seeing this past winter. I would like to go into a little bit of the details on what CAL FIRE Incident Management Team 2 is doing here on this incident. And to help us out is Incident Commander Chief Carter. I just want to talk a little bit about what our mission is here for the counties of Mono and Inyo. On the 8th of uh, this month, um, through the Cal OES, Cal Fire was mission tasked to provide uh, an incident management type one team to support the counties of Mono County and Inyo County. 
Uh, so what that actually means, the EOC, so we've, we've actually come in to stand them up to be able to support the counties in their efforts of the snow recovery, as well as the debris flows and mud flow removal. Uh, so we've assembled a team that will come in that will support each of the sections within the EOC and then work them through the process of ordering through Cal OES. There are many components that go into an incident management team. One of those is operations. Let's hear a little more what operations is doing on this incident. Currently in Inyo County and in Mono County, uh, we've assisted them in standing up some snow removal task force consisting of supervision personnel, front loaders, tractors, as well as a, a number of dump trucks for them to do snow removal and Cal Fire hand crews clearing around storm drains and fire hydrants and uh, assisting with a number of other operations. In the town of Mammoth, multiple uh, USAR teams up working on the infrastructure issues, the building collapse issues that are starting to occur due to the, the heavy snow loads. This week's shout out goes to 10-year-old Isaiah who visited Glen Avon Station 17 in Mira Loma to share his love of fire alarms and related safety devices. The firefighters treated young Isaiah to an up-close tour of the fire station, their apparatus, and the equipment that firefighters use. Thanks for stopping by, Isaiah. As we close out this week's episode, we'd like to thank the firefighters who paid their respect to Master Sergeant Michael Ty Kettenhofen while he was transported from Ontario Airport to Evans Brown Mortuary in Menifee. His family was appreciative of the support you showed and the services you provide as first responders. To stay up to date on current incidents as they happen in Riverside County, be sure to follow at CalFireRRU on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Did you happen to capture any pictures or videos of our firefighters in action? If so, send them our way at rrupio at fire.ca.gov. On behalf of your Cal Fire, Riverside County Fire Department, Public Affairs and Community Education Bureau, I'm Tawny Castro, thanks for watching.